Hello and welcome back to Redirecting. I've been meaning to cover this topic for quite some time now as it relates to those of us in the diaspora. Now many of us have an understanding of who we are. We're starting to wake up to that fact and there seems to be a growing movement of our people who understand that we are in a foreign land, in a sense. Now, of course, there are those who will argue and say that uh, black people were here in the Americas before any other racial group. And that would be true. Um, but it was not the Israelites. It was more the children of Ham. And if you want to get further details and historical information, biblical information, to confirm all of that, you can look at White It Out Part 4. Again, White It Out Part 4 will show you who the original people in this land were. Now, um, basically, what I'm going to be talking about is the misunderstanding about where our homeland is. Uh, many of our people believe that Africa is our homeland, and those of us in the truth know that the land that they call Israel is actually our homeland. But we brought a lot of clarification to that as well, to where the land that they've slated as Israel is not actually all of it. Uh, the scripture actually gives you boundaries that go far beyond that little slice or sliver of land that they have claimed. Uh, they knew that they would have extreme difficulty trying to uh, claim the actual borders that were promised to Abraham. When you look in scripture, um, it actually explains the borders, uh, which was far greater than the space or the ch slice. I can't even say chunk of land, but it's a little slice or a sliver of land that they call Israel today. Um, a lot of people, they get confused about the promises of the Most High Yah, um, especially when they look at um, obvious deceptions that have taken place in the world, such as uh, the creation of the Suez Canal to try to create a division between Africa and Israel, or this created Middle East, as they call it. There was no such thing as the Middle East in historical times. That was yet another creation of deceivers. Uh, there are so many deceptions out here that you can't even, you can't even, we've lost count. So many deceptions. But we need to understand where um, our promised land is because a lot of people are just putting forth all of these doctrines that have people confused. Uh, the, the doctrines of calling America our homeland and calling um, South Africa um, our land. I mean, all of these different doctrines have people confused, and, and those who are not truly confused and have accepted these um, alternative ideas um, don't even realize that they totally discount uh, just hundreds of scripture that go against these narratives, especially the one that talks about America being our promised land. Now, the, the one deception that can trick a lot of people is where they are saying that Africa and Israel or the Middle East, as these deceptors have called it, um, are on the same tectonic plate. And they try to use that to tie the whole of Africa as our promised land. When, again, the most high established boundaries because the children of Israel were not the only descendants of Abraham. He's the father of many nations. Okay. You had the Moabites, you had uh, the Amalekites and the Edomites, and um, you had the Ishmaelites. You had so many different groups. You had the Hamites um, that weren't descendants of Abraham, but they were descendants of Noah, and they had space on the continent of Africa as well. Um, Japheth. Uh, being a descendant of Noah, he uh, went to the upper regions and the European areas. Now, it's so much to cover in just a quick video, in which that's all I'm trying to do right now. What we have to understand is even Japheth did not start off as a white man, blonde hair, blue eyes. So much deception has been put out there to where our people are believing everything. Now, one quick thing that I want to say 
um, to those of you who like to push the narrative um, that Japheth is the white man, Ham is the black man, and Shem is all of those in between. That is another mind manipulating tactic to get your eyes off of who the true children of Shem are. Okay? All of these deceptions, so many wrapped up. Oh my, I'm, I'm telling you, it's just ridiculous. It's off the chain. But um, anyway, back to Japheth. He was also black. Think of Noah and his wife for a moment. They had three black children, just like any other black couple would have. Now, for those of you who would argue and say, well, Japheth was albino. No, Japheth wasn't albino. He established himself in the Isles of the Gentiles, which is in the, um, the northern European areas. But you have to understand that the human landscape was changed once the bloodline or the seed line was infiltrated. So Japheth's seed line was infiltrated. And if you understand what infiltration means, it's kind of like uh, the process of blanqueamento, where you throw in some mixtures um, and the seed line changes. When you had all of these white men who went down to Brazil and other areas, and they created a process called blanqueamento, this is where white men go in and mate with the dark populations, um, more specifically black women, to create a lighter gene pool in a region. So what happened in Japheth's um, lineage is the very same thing. His seed line was infiltrated. It was infiltrated a long time ago, a long time ago. And um, when you look at the Whited Out series, we kind of get into it how the barbarians came in. And um, one of the narrators in the, the documentary that we included some of the clips from, it actually said how these barbarians came up out of the swamps like evil spirits. And they converged on the populations and they began to, I'm going to say rape, but, you know, they're going to say mix and mingle with the population of humans and create it. Um, other species. Okay, some of you, you're like, oh my goodness, what is this woman talking about? Don't think for one moment that everyone is the same. Everyone is not the same. We are clearly very different. Although there has been a lot of mixing all across the board. Um, as scripture states, after the third generation, you either go back to black or back to white. You see, so for those of you who say, well, we all have something in us. If a black person, or should I say a mixed person, mates with a black person, and then that um, offspring mates with a black person, you are back into the third generation of black blood. Likewise, when any of you who saw the movie, the, the movie Rabbit Proof Fence, it showed how they were trying to white out the population of Australia um, by doing something similar where they said by the third cross or the third generation, there will be no evidence of black blood because you have that mixed child who made it with someone white and the offspring from that union made it with someone white and it produced an, a white person, okay? Um, so that kind of gives you just a brief explanation. I would encourage you to watch the White It Out documentary series. I mean, listen to the name, White It Out. It's talking about how the um, bloodlines around the world have been whited out through infiltrations, through seed infiltration. Okay, now back to Africa and Israel. Our people have been fed so much information that we are starting to lean on uh, doctrines that are clearly untrue. Uh, for instance, you have a lot of uh, people who are who are starting to publish information or uh, print information or produce um, information, films or documentaries where they're trying to convince you that these so-called whited out Native Americans and Latinos and all of these other racial groups are Israelites as well. We all came over on the boats black and to, to try to suggest that someone looking like Jennifer Lopez is an Israelite, you are clearly ignoring the scripture. 
throughout scripture, it was prohibited for the Israelites to mix and mingle. Okay. But now we have all of these doctrines swirling to where our people are believing that we can do whatever we want, whenever we want. And so there is this confusion of face things going on, right? And you have people using the scripture where it talks about confusion of faces or their faces waxing pale. You have our people using those scriptures to justify and say that now people that look basically white are Israelites too. That's what happens when people are bending and twisting and twirling the scripture out of control to support a narrative that they want to believe. That is what happens. And that is what we see happening. And as a result, this return to our homeland is so mixed up to where, listen to this, listen, you have Jewish people who have no right to say who is who, period, because it was not put within their hands. The Most High knows who his children are. But you have them saying that the only black people um, or the only groups of black people that can be Israelites are Ethiopians and possibly the Limba. OK, this is the narrative that they're pushing. And so they're trying to basically say that those of us who are waking up in the diaspora, that it is not so. Then you have some of them who will who will say that only eight of the tribes are Negro and the other four tribes were white. And then you have those who believe that even some of the Asians are from the tribes of Israel. It is so simple to determine who the tribes of Israel are when you really look at scriptural texts in its entirety and get understanding. But most people, because they're trying to pull in all of these other nations, the scripture even talked about giving our heritage to another people, that we should not do such things. But that is what we are doing, giving our heritage to another people. This is the heritage of the Most High Yah's children, but yet we are giving it away because we believe that we can do that. Just like the Jewish people believe that they can do it. Our people are doing the exact same thing. And so there's this confusion about where our homeland is. Um, Africa, Israel, tectonic plate, uh, the creation of the Suez Canal, all of these deceptions, the DNA doctrines, the DNA deception, um, America's our homeland, South Africa is actually Jerusalem, the maps have been turned upside down, Egypt is actually in lower Africa, um, lower Africa is actually upper Africa. So many different doctrines and people who don't study, people who don't understand, people who don't have a relationship with the Most High are being deceived by all of this madness. And so now you have a lot of people who are planning, or should I say, desiring an exodus back to Africa, in which even the Africans that are from the children of Israel, at some point, when the time comes, will be gathered out of the places where they are, and we will be placed back in our own land. Now, we've covered this in it very extensively where our people are saying, well, it can't be Israel because the land is um, not flowing with milk and honey and all of this, that, and the other. Huh. It's so much deeper than that. The Most High in his word told us that our land was going to be trodden down by Gentiles. He also told us that the land was going to be desolate, that the land was going to be in turmoil. All of these things were going to take place until he reestablishes his kingdom here on earth in our land. So it's already been told to us how things were, are going to be, but the way they are right now, our people are looking for that now to determine where our land is. But even when you look in Africa, Africa right now, just like Israel, is being ruled over by Gentiles. Now, I'm not talking about the black rulers that are in place because many of these so-called black rulers are actually Israelite stock as well. But they have been put in place by these Gentiles. Our people basically don't run anything in Africa. They have very little control over what is happening in Africa. Look at what happened in Zimbabwe. When Zimbabwe decided, okay, we're going to return land back to the original inhabitants, sanctions flew all across the water and they literally crippled their economy. That is how unfair they are. And so there is much about Africa that I want to talk about in the coming 
weeks or months perhaps. Um, I can't really really put a time on it because I have so many topics that I'd like to talk about, but I can only do it as time permits. But there is a reason why Africa is in the state that it's in right now. There is a reason, there's a very serious reason. Now, our people, we are trying to pull together pieces of the puzzle that don't even fit. And so those who are unlearned and those who uh, depend on others to just give them all of their information and those who lack um a real relationship with the Most High are basically being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine that is thrown at them. And when these winds of doctrine go forth and people stumble thereby, when you put those out there, you're going to be responsible for every last person that stumbles because of these doctrines. This is why it is very important that we study to show ourselves approved and that we lean not to our own understanding. This is why it is very important, very important. And so the question remains, is Africa or Israel our homeland? And I know that there's always going to be those who try to say, well, Africa and Israel are one and the same. Israel is on the same tectonic plate. That's another form of deception because the land that was promised to Abraham did not go to the lower southern regions of Africa. But when you try to say that they're on the same tectonic plate, that creates a deception to try to say that there is no difference in the land of Israel and Africa. Because we know that the land of Egypt was in very close proximity to Israel because their travel time was a very short distance and could be traveled by foot. This is why Yahusha, the one who the world calls Jesus, this is why his family was able to flee into um, Egypt when Herod the king was trying to destroy him or kill him. They were able to flee on foot to Egypt. And so we know where Egypt is. The Most High left Egypt as a witness to establish where Israel actually is. And even though people are trying to use maps, it's amazing to me that you're trying to use old maps. Don't want to look at the newer maps because the newer maps are basically in alignment with uh, where Egypt is today, um, where the scripture says it would be, because you can't get past the fact that Egypt is well established. All of these ancient relics and buildings and structures and sphinxes and pyramids, all of that stuff is thousands of years old and have been in place for so long that no one can stake claim on it being a recent constructed structure. No one. And so when you look at the people who are trying to say, well, what about the pyramids that are in the Americas? Yet again, it lends to the fact that some of the children of Ham traveled here as well. The cultures were very similar. That's why I want you to look at the White It Out series, especially the White It Out Part 4, because it shows you the similarities to uh, some of the um, Aztecs and the uh, people who settled here in America first to those in Africa. Some of the same, some of the very same customs and dress and all of that, you see. So, again, we need to understand what is happening in this world and that we have to understand to the fullest that our land is being trodden down by Gentiles. Trodden down by Gentiles. And so either we're going to return to Africa or we're going to turn to the land of Israel. Now, this was supposed to be the year of return, right? A lot of people said the year of return. So we're halfway into the year, okay? And some say, well, if it doesn't happen right away, technically it's supposed to happen in August. Okay, so we're in June, July, August. So basically, um, according to what some have put out there, we literally have two more months before there is a mass exodus out of this country back into Africa. Now, this is the information that a lot of people have put out there. Now, others have proven that... Um, if you look at the Enoch calendar, that that time has already come and gone in 2018. But a lot of people are still holding on to the whole idea 
of this being the year that it's all going to take place, that there's going to be a mass exodus. Now, I don't consider a few hundred or a few thousand people um, visiting Africa uh, for a, a week or two as a mass exodus. I don't even consider um, just a few thousand people moving to, ac to um, Africa as a mass exodus. Because in the diaspora, you have millions of people that have been scattered to the four corners of the world, of the earth. So thousands could not be a mass exodus of the children of Yah. So, again, much deception has been put out there into the world. And our people are just kind of sitting on the edges of their seat, uh, wondering what is going to take place. What's happening? What are we looking for? Where are we returning to? Is it Africa? Is it Israel? And one thing I can say for sure, that the scripture tells us that the Most High is going to gather his people. He didn't say that it's going to be based on our ability to afford a plane ticket or to be able to afford to ship all of our things to Africa or Israel or wherever we decide that we want our homeland to be. And that's the problem. Everyone is deciding where we think it's going to be. And they're twisting scripture. Um, when the scripture in Jeremiah was talking about returning to the place from where you came, that was clearly talk, talking about the Babylonian captivity. It wasn't talking about this end time captivity. This is why a lot of things are not making sense. This is why a lot of things are not making sense. Things have to make sense when you are saying that this is what is meant. If you say that after 400 years, we're going to be... Um, here's what it says, leaving with great substance that our affliction is going to end and that we are going to leave with great substance. Well, our affliction has not ended. That's one thing. We have not left. And no one has given us any great substance. No great substance. Nothing. Nothing. And so, does it make sense that we are supposed to leave here this year, the year of return the, that marks the 400 years that we've been here? Does it make sense now? Well, for those of you who want to hold out and wait until August, understand this, that if the Most High were to indeed perform such a miracle to where even the poorest among us we're going to be taken and put back in our land. See, the thing is, you got people with money who saved up or who have done different things and they're able to get a ticket for them or maybe themselves and their family or just a husband and wife. In some cases, leaving children behind. But you think that this is the exodus that the scripture talked about, the gathering of his people after 400 years? Based on your ability to afford if it was based on our ability to afford this, then it would sound like the Most High was unfair because our seniors, single mothers, incarcerated brothers, poor people, none of them would be able to. They wouldn't be able to afford a ticket. So again, I want you to consider those things when you say that we have to make this great return to Africa. Especially when... The regions of Africa that our people are talking about returning to was not the promised land that was promised to our forefather Abraham. That is not the land that was promised. People can try to wiggle and twist and turn and bend and do all they want and turn all types of flips and change maps around and um, disregard this and accept that. If it doesn't line up to what the Bible says about the boundaries, then if it doesn't fit, then you must acquit. So where is our promised land? Some of you are still going to hold on to the fact that it's America because you want it to be. You're used to being here, so you don't want to leave here. And so you want to believe that this is it. Some of you are going to believe that it's in South Africa because one of your, one of your favorite teachers said that. Some of you are going to just believe whatever you want to believe. There are different narratives. Some people believe that it's down in Peru. Some of you are going to believe that because your favorite teacher told you that. But none of it lines up to scripture. It doesn't make sense in scripture that South Africa, South America, or America, or Peru, or any of those areas, none of that makes sense 
according to scripture. But when you look at the boundaries that were established to our forefather Abraham, that makes sense. Now, just because those people in the land of Israel today only carved off a little sliver doesn't mean that that is not part of it because it does fall within the boundaries, but it far exceeds that little slice that they have commandeered. That little slice is definitely not the land in its entirety that was promised to our forefather Abraham. So as we begin to study more, study to show ourselves approved, as we begin to seek truth in this last evil day, as we begin to sift out all of the lies, sort out all of the lies, as we begin to open our eyes, as we begin to ponder, as we begin to search and pray and fast and do all of those things, we will begin to understand that things will become a lot more clear as we become closer to the Most High. He says, seek me while I may be found. Draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. So as we go on this searching mission, this praying mission, and this mission of truth, and we refuse to lean to our own understanding, we will begin to realize what is happening in this world. I think I've talked for a very long time in this video. I didn't mean to talk this long. But I just want you to keep in mind, just because someone tells you that this place or that place is the land of Israel and it doesn't line up to scripture, don't believe it just because you want to believe it. Make sure that it lines up with what the Bible says about where the land of Israel is. I don't care what kind of maps people are pulling out to show you. Remember, those maps were made by the same people that they claim gave us all this other deception. The same people. So then at that point, we have to look at obvious facts and not these hand-drawn maps of man, especially when these people, these men, represent the same deceivers who have deceived the whole world. Okay, family? Where is our promised land? Let's keep, up, keep open our eyes and ears because it's going to become very clear to us after a while. Very clear. With that, I will say shalom.